Good morning students. Welcome back to this video session. I remain Samuel Chuku Emeka, aka Sandom for Peace. Uh, let us continue our discussion of uh, Module 1 homework. This is part 2 of the homework assignment. <coughs> so, uh, in this part 2, we continue from, uh, we begin from uh, question 6. Question 6. <coughs> Consider the sequence, <coughs> excuse me, Consider the sequence defined by, so they give us a sequence, uh, the nth term of the sequence, the nth term of the sequence is a uh, n cubed minus n squared over 2. Okay. The first question here is uh, A. Is this a recursive or explicit equation? Explain why. Is this sequence, is it a recursive or explicit equation? Explain why. And then B. Using the formula, list the first four terms of the sequence starting with n equal to 1. Using the formula, list the first four terms of the sequence, starting with n equal to 1. So, um, these are similar problems to your homework. Okay, these are similar problems to your homework assignment. Uh, if we look at this sequence, this is an explicit uh, sequence. It's an explicit formula. This is an explicit equation or explicit formula because you could get any term of the sequence without uh, without a, a previous term. Uh, when we talk about an explicit uh, equation or explicit formula, uh, you could get any term any term of the sequence without having to get the previous term. <clears throat> when we talk about recursive formula, okay, or recursive equation, then any term of the sequence will, will have to be got. You need to get any term of the sequence from the previous term. <clears throat> okay, excuse me. Yeah, from the previous term. So, this is explicit uh, equation because any term of the sequence can be got without having to get the previous term. You could get any term without having the need to get the previous term. That is why it is called an explicit equation or an explicit formula. So they want us to get the first four terms of the sequence. So uh, uh, first term A1, <coughs> let first term, the first term, let's call it A1. This means that anywhere we see, uh, here N is equal to 1, N equal to 1. So anywhere we see N, that's why we put A1. Anywhere we see N, we put 1. So this is a 1 cube minus 1 squared over 2. And this will give us 1 minus 1 over 2, which is 0 over 2, which is 0. So the first term is 0. The second term, second term, n equal to 2. So we say a2, a2, a subscript 2, which means n is 2. The second term, a subscript 2. So this will be 2 cubed minus 2 squared all over 2. 2 cubed minus 2 squared divided by 2. And that will give us 2 cubed is 8 minus uh, 2 squared is 4 divided by 2. And that will give us 4 divided by 2 which is 2. 
this is the second term of the sequence. So you see, we could get this second term without having to get the first term. We don't need to get the first term. That is why it's called an explicit formula. Because we could get any term of the sequence without having to get without having to get the previous term. Uh, the third term the third term is n equal to 3. <coughs> and this is a subscript 3. Anywhere we see n in the formula, we put 3. So this is 3 cubed minus 3 squared all over 2. And that will give us a 3 cubed is a 27 minus 3 squared is 9 divided by 2. And 27 minus 9 is 18. 18 divided by 2 gives us 9. Okay, it gives us 9. Then the fourth term, the fourth term, n equal to 4. So here we say a 4, a subscript 4, a subscript 4, <coughs> excuse me, a subscript 4. So this is 4 q anywhere we see uh, n in the formula, in the sequence formula, in the formula for the sequence, we put 4. So this is 4 cubed minus 4 squared divided by 2. And that will give us uh, 4 cubed is 64 minus 4 squared is 16 divided by 2. Uh, 14 minus 6 is 8. 5 minus 1 is 4. 48 divided by 2 gives us 24. So the first four terms of the sequence are uh, 0, 2, 9, and 24. First four terms of the sequence. Okay? This becomes your answer here. That's your answer. Alright, let's do question 7. So I'm going to erase all these. We can get question 7. Question 7 says, consider the sequence defined by, here they gave us the first term, a1 is 3, and then A1 means the first term, okay, A subscript 1, and then the nth term of the sequence, A, N, A subscript N, nth term of the sequence is a, uh, okay, let me use my own, <laughs> I'm using, my, I, I want to use my own example, A1 is 5, okay, I'm not going to use the exact, Question no. Otherwise, I'll get in trouble. <laughs> A1 is, uh, and that would not be good, you know. So, uh, A1 is uh, 5, and nth term of the sequence is 7 minus 3 times A n minus 1. <coughs> okay? So, uh, this is the nth term of the sequence. This is the first term. The first term, and then this is the nth term of the sequence. Nth term of the sequence. And this is the first term. So it says here, is this a recursive or explicit equation? Explain why. And then it says, using the formula, list the first four terms of the sequence starting with n equal to 1. So you can see here, uh, this is a recursive, this is a recursive uh, formula because
for you to get any term, you have to get the previous term. Okay? You see from this formula, this is n minus 1, the n, the, this is the nth term. This is the nth term. Nth term. Okay? If you have this uh, a n minus 1, this is the previous the previous term previous term before end term before the end term this, this a subscript n minus 1 is what is the previous term before that end term that is what it means so you see that this end term uh, for you to get it you have to get the previous term for it. You see that? <coughs> you have to get the previous term for it. Okay? That is a, uh, uh, with a recursive formula. Okay? So, uh, the, to get a term, it is a formula that each term of the sequence is got from a previous term. You have to get each term from a previous term. That is why it is a recursive formula. For explicit formula, you do not have to get any term from the previous term. You don't have to. You can just get any term right away. We can get the first term right away. We can get only the fourth term right away from this. But this, we cannot get the fourth term. We cannot get the fourth term immediately. We, because we have to get a previous term. We have to get, for us to get the fourth term, we have to get the third term. For us to get the third term, we have to get the second term. For us to get the second term, we have to get this fourth, we have to get the first term. But they already gave us the first term, so that's great. Okay, so that's good. So, uh, let's go ahead and do this. Uh, so, the first time here, a, one, a subscript 1 is 5. They gave it to us, so no problem. Now, the second time, a subscript 2 would be 7 minus 3 times, 3 times a, 2 minus 1. Because anytime you see n, you put 2. So this a subscript 2 will be 7 minus 3 times a. 2 minus 1 is 1. Okay? So the first term, we need the first term. In order to get the second term, we need the first term. So this will be. Let me because I'll need space here. So a subscript 2 will be 7 minus 3 times the first term is 5. So that is 7 minus 15. So a subscript 2 is negative 8. Okay? Negative 8. Now let's get the third term. Let's get the third term. The third term is n equal to 3. So this will be a subscript 3. We look at the formula. Equal to 7 minus 3 times a 3 minus 1. 3 minus 1. For us to get the third term, we have to get the second term first. That is why it's recursive. So a subscript 3 is 7 minus 3 times a squared. a to the, not a squared, I'm sorry. a subscript 2, which is the second term. The second term. So this will give us 7 minus 3 times negative 8. So this will be 7 plus 24. Okay, 7 plus 24, which will give us what? 
uh, third one. Which will give us third one. So it's the top term is third one. Okay. Then the next one, the fourth term, the fourth term, fourth term is n equal to 4. So this is a subscript 4, and that will give us 7 minus 3 times a, 4 minus 1. I'm just breaking it down, you know. So this is 7 minus 3 times a subscript 3, the third term. And this will give us 7 minus 3 times 31. Okay? So a subscript 4 will be 7 minus 3 times 1 is 3. 3 times 3 is 9. Okay? 7 minus 93. So a subscript 4 will give us negative 86. Negative 86. So the first four terms, the first four terms of the sequence, first four terms of the sequence, would be a uh, five. Negative 8, 31, negative 86. And that's it. Okay? First four times of the sequence. That's it. Do you understand it? Okay. Let's, uh, let's do the question 8. Actually, I will need I will need the entire board. So let me erase this right away. Okay. So they gave us the universal set. The universal set. Uh, I'm gonna use my own. I use my own. We have a peace, peace, love, joy, 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 blessing, favor, favor, faith, faith, hope. Charity, charity, strength, good, okay, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, set A, set A is a set of Love, joy, faith, charity, charity, good. Set B, B is a set of, B is a set of blessing, blessing. Favor, faith, faith, hope, hope. Okay. Set C. Uh, B 
this joy, blessing, good. Okay, I hope I have the chance here. So C is peace, joy, blessing, good. Okay. I was looking for, I hope it will contain space. Peace, joy, blessing, good. All right. So, the question says, <coughs> represent each of the following sets by an array of zeros and ones. Explain your reasoning. Represent each of the following sets by an array of zeros and ones. Explain your reasoning. So, um, we have a, we will first of all, these are the sets. Uh, a part A is uh, A union C. Okay. And then B is uh, A intersects B. And C part. This has three kids. The question has three kids. Uh, B, complement of B union C. The complement of B union C. Excuse me. So, uh, we are going to, first of all, find the sets of this. And then after that, we shall use the characteristic function, what we call characteristic function, to now list the elements of the set as an array. An array of zeros and ones. Okay? But first of all, let us list the set. Let us list it first. Okay? Uh, let's list, let's define the elements of each set. So A union C, union is like marriage. Okay? Get everything that A has, get everything that C has. If they have anything in common, do not write it two times. Okay? We did this in part one. And also, we explain this in sets, in the videos on sets. So, uh, A, we get everything that A has first. We have love, joy, faith, <coughs> charity, good, good. Then we look at C, peace. We get, we write peace. We do this in order, okay? We have to do this in order. Joy, we have written joy before, so we don't write it anymore. Um, love, joy, faith, charity, good. Peace, joy, we've written it. Blessing, blessing. Uh, good, we've written good before, okay? So we have this here. This is a, a union C. As a set. As a set. Okay? This is A union C as a set. Now let us write the characteristic function. The characteristic function of this as an array. So this is the characteristic function A union C as an array. Okay, this will give us an array. Uh, as I said, we use braces. This is what we call braces. Braces. That is a set. As an array, we use the uh, we use a bracket. Okay, an array we use bracket. An array we use bracket. So. Uh, with a characteristic function of this A union C as an array, what we are going to do is we look at a uh, we look at the universal set as is. Okay, we look at the universal set as is. If the element is contained here, we write one. That means on. You can call it on. If the element is not part of this element, we write zero, off. 
ones and zeros okay uh, ones and zeros so uh, if the element is in this <coughs> excuse me we look at universal set it is 10 the cardinality is 10 cardinality of the universal set is 10 is 10 so we are going to have 10 elements in the array uh, if we look at the universal set <coughs> if the element is in this uh, set we write one on okay one on zero off you find this in your electronic devices you see some of this uh, you have something like this in your switches something like this some of you have it like this you have that zero off one time boolean algebra we shall come to that boolean algebra so you can see that in that sense if the element is in this array here we write one if the element is not an element of this set if the element is an element of this set we look at the universal set the universal set okay if the element is in this set we write one in that order if the element is not in this set we write zero and we separate arrays with comma we se we separate the uh, elements of an array with comma okay peace is peace here? Yes, peace is here. I write one, comma. Okay. Uh, love is love here. Yes, I write one, comma. Okay. Joy is here. I write one, comma. Blessing is here. One, comma. Favor, favor is not here. I write zero, comma. Faith, I write one, comma. Uh, hope, hope, hope is not here. I write zero, comma. Uh, charity, charity, charity is here. I write one, comma. Strength. Strength is not here. I write zero, comma. Good. Good is here. I write one. And then I close this. I close it. So that is what they're asking for. Okay? You make sure you count it to make sure there are one, to make sure there are ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, and that is it. That is for the first one. Okay, you just see. Now let's see whether we can do A intersect B. A intersect B. A intersect B is uh, we look at this. We write the, we list the elements of the set. Uh, what they have in common only what set A and set B have in common only uh, love, no joy, no faith, faith, they have faith in common okay uh, charity, no good, no so they have only faith, only faith so this is a unit set a set that has only one element. Uh, now the characteristic function f subscript a intersect b we represent that in a, as an array. So peace is no zero, love no zero, joy is not there, blessing not, favor not, faith one. Because faith is there. Okay? Then hope, zero, is not there. Charity, zero. 
strength 0, good 0. And we close it. That is the uh, characteristic function for that. Representing this as zeros and ones, as an array with zeros and ones. Now let's do the C part. And B union C all complement. Complement of B union C. So we are going to we are going to get B union C first. Then we now take the complement. Then we can now uh, write the characteristic function as an array of zeros and ones. So, <coughs> excuse me, uh, we write B union C as the set first. Okay, B union C. So, well, let's list it in order. We write B, what B has, what C has. If they have anything in common, we don't write it two times. Okay? So we have lesson, lesson, we have a favor, let's write everything that B has first. Faith, we have faith, faith in God, hope, we have hope. Then peace, peace, joy, joy is, we've not written joy before, so we write joy. Then blessing, we have it, we have blessing, we've written blessing already, okay? So the next thing we write now is uh, good, 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 good job, okay? So blessing, favor, faith, hope, peace, joy, good. All right, now let's list the complement B union C, the complement of B union C. So this means everything in the universal set, everything in the universal set that is not in this set, B union C. Everything in the universal set that is not in this set. So peace is there, so no. Love. So we write love, uh, joy is there, um, blessing is there, favor is there, faith is there, hope is there, charity, 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 uh, strength, strength is not there so we write it. Strength, strength, okay, and then good is there, okay. So let's count this and make sure it's 10, <coughs> excuse me, let's count this and make sure it is 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, alright, now let's find the characteristic function, okay. B union C as an array. Peace, not there, we have 0, comma. Love is there, 1, comma. Joy, 0, comma. Blessing, 0, comma. Favor, 0, comma. Faith, 0. Comma. Hope zero comma <laughs> charity one comma strength one comma good zero and you close okay one two three four five six seven eight nine ten that's it Question 9, we have uh, we have a 3 by 2 matrix, negative 5, 12, x plus y, 4, 
16x plus z equal to negative 5 by row, by row, negative 5, 12, negative 10, x minus y, 16, 7. And the question says, find, calculate x, y, z. Okay, so this is what we call equality of matrices. Equality of matrices, you can check my notes and videos on matrices. Uh, for equality of matrices, <coughs> there are the conditions that must be satisfied. The conditions, the conditions that must be satisfied are the size must be the same. Okay, we call it size or order or dimension of a matrix. So what is the order or the size or dimension of this matrix? This is three rows and two columns. This is three by two and this is three by two. So the sizes must be the same. They are three by two matrices. Then the corresponding elements must be the same. And the corresponding elements must be the same. So we look at this, negative 5 is equal to negative 5, 12, 12, 16, 16, okay? So if we had maybe 16, 9, if we had 9 here, then no, it won't work, no. Okay? Corresponding elements must be the same. So in that case, we have that x plus y will be negative 10, okay? 4 will be x minus y and then x plus z will be 7 x plus z will be 7 okay so let's find x y and z uh, we can solve this x plus y is equal to negative 10 and then this will be x minus y equal to 4 so we can solve this by elimination method we can just, uh, here, we can add this. If we add this, x plus x will give us 2x, uh, y plus minus y, y minus y, that is gone, equal to minus 10 plus 4. <coughs> minus 10 plus 4 gives us minus 6. So, x will be minus 6 divided by 2 x will be minus 3 x is negative 3 ok then the next one we could still write is x plus y is negative 10 x minus y is 4 and you can solve it whichever way you want to <coughs> you can use Substitution, you can use Kramer's rule, you, a method of determinants, you can use row reduction method, you can use uh, a row reduction method or Gauss Jordan method. You can also use the matrix inverse method. Okay? So here, in this case, we subtract. X minus X is gone. Y minus minus Y is 2Y. Then minus 10 minus 4 is minus 14. So y will be minus 14 divided by 2. y is minus 7. Negative 7 or minus 7. That's the same thing. Okay. Then we also have here that x plus z is equal to 7. So z will be 7 minus x. z will be... 7 minus, x is minus 3, minus 3, so minus minus is plus, 7 plus 3, okay, when you hate to hate somebody, that means you love the person, 7 plus 3 is 10, so therefore, x, y, z will give us uh, negative 3, negative 7, 
This becomes your answer. This becomes your answer. Okay. All right. The, let's do question 10. The last but not the least. Question 10. Last but not least. Question 10. And we have a, we are given three matrices here. A, matrix A is uh, by row 2, 3, 5, negative 3, negative 2, 0. Okay. Matrix B. Oh, let me write this beside it. Matrix B is a 3 by 3 matrix by column 207, if we list it by column, uh, negative 2, 3, 0, 3, negative 3, negative 2, by Two zero seven negative two three zero three negative three negative two. All right, and then matrix C. We have matrix C um, to be if we list by row one two negative three and then zero negative two four okay so this is a two by three matrix this is a two by three matrix <coughs> okay two by three matrix and this is a three by three matrix and this is a two by three matrix those are the sizes of the matrices okay the first question now this question here you can use, uh, there are, if you go to the resources section, the resources section of my website, under discrete mathematics, there are some calculators there that can help, that you can use it to check your work. You know, you have to show your work. But you can use that, those calculators to just check your work. Okay? Um, then uh, you can also use Google Spreadsheet. Google Spreadsheet is free. Or you can even use Excel, Microsoft Excel, to answer the questions on this. You can. Okay? Just to check your work. Use it to check. You can use it to check your work to make sure that you got it right. Okay? You can use Google Spreadsheet. You can use Excel. I think I, I, yeah, I did some videos in Excel. Okay, I did some videos in Excel. Check the resources part of discrete mathematics. Uh, <coughs> you could use Excel, you could use Google Spreadsheet, and you could use some of the calculators there to check your work for this question. First one is compute A plus C. A plus C. Matrix A plus C. Okay. So, uh, this one, <coughs> excuse me, <coughs> excuse me, because this is a 2 by 3 matrix, this is a 2 by 3 matrix, no problem, you can add or subtract it, okay, in addition I did uh, videos on this and notes, I have notes on addition and subtraction of matrices, as well as the videos on it, for you to add two matrices, or subtract two matrices, the size must be the same. Okay, we call it size or order or dimension. Their order must be the same, and then the, you add or subtract 
the corresponding elements. So this is 2 plus 1. This will be 3 plus 2. So I'm doing the corresponding elements. This will be 5 plus minus 3. Okay. This is minus 3 plus 0. This is minus 2 plus minus 2. And this is 0 plus 4. So this will give us uh, 3. 2 plus 1 is 3. 3 plus 2 is 5. 5 plus minus 3. 5 minus 3. Which is 2. Okay. Uh, minus 3 plus 0 is minus 3. Minus 2 plus minus 2. Plus minus. When you love to hate someone, that means you hate the person. Okay. If we don't use hate, like and dislike. When you like to dislike someone, that means you dislike the person. Uh, minus 2, minus 2. Minus 4. Okay. 0 plus 4 is 4. And that's the answer. That is it. That is the answer. Okay, that is it. It's also a 2 by 3 matrix. A 2 by 3 matrix. 2 rows, 3 columns. Okay. Uh, B part. They say compute AB. Compute the product AB. If this product is undefined, explain why. Excuse me. Okay. If this product is undefined, explain why. So let's find A, B. Uh, A times B. I will need more space. Okay. A times B. So, uh, <coughs> this multiplication of matrices In multiplying matrices, we, it's good. I have already listed this, so that is great. Okay, uh, and I did videos on this as well, notes and videos on multiplying matrices. So, for two matrices to multiply, like you have A B, the number of columns of A should be equal to the number of rows of B. So, the number of columns of A should be equal to the number of rows of B. That means they can multiply. They can multiply. They can. They can multiply. And then AB, AB, <coughs> so you have A, A is a 2 by 3 matrix. You have B, that is a 3 by 3 matrix. So because, because the number of columns of A is equal to the number of rows of B, they can multiply. Okay? Now, AB will now be, the size of AB will be the number of rows of A by the number of columns of B. So, we should expect a 2 by 3 matrix here. When we multiply this, we should expect a 2 by 3 matrix. A 2 by 3 matrix. So now, uh, this is feasible. It is conformable for multiplication. We can multiply it. Okay. Why? Because the number of columns of A is equal to the number of rows of B. And then the size of the product, what we are going to get is, the size of it will be, that is the size of AB, will be the number of rows of A by number of columns of B. So we are going to get a 2 by 3 matrix when we multiply A and B. And we do it row by column. Row by column. Okay? So 2 times 2 plus 3 times 0 plus 5 times 7. Breathe in, you break. Row by column. Row by column. First row by first column. Okay, then first row by second column. 2 times negative 2 plus 
3 times 3 plus 5 times 0. You break, breathe in, in, you break. Okay? First row by second column. Then you do first row by third column. 2 times 3 plus 3 times negative 3 plus 5 times negative 2. You close. Out. <sighs> you, know, you write the first one in. You write the second one in. Then you write the last one row by column. Out. <sighs> okay. Row by column. First row, first column, break. First row, second column, break. First row, third column, close. Then we also do second row, first column, break. Second row, second column, break. Second row, third column. And there you go. So the next one, second row, first column. We always do that row by column, row by column. So negative three times two plus negative two times zero second row first column okay plus zero times seven you break no you break in the second row second column negative three times negative two plus negative 2 times 3 plus 0 times 0 you break okay you break that's a break here okay and then second row third column negative 3 times 3 plus negative 2 times negative 3 Plus zero times negative two. You close. <sighs> okay. <coughs> Some people ask, how do you know that this that you did this well? How? Okay. I will say this in the video, in our videos on matrices. Two, two, you see, how you know that you're multiplying right? These last things must be the same. How you know that you're multiplying right? Okay? This has to be the same. Has to be the same. See that? How do you know you're multiplying right? The endings has to be the same. If they're not the same, hey, check your work. You check your work. Okay? Now, let's finish up. So now this will be, uh, this will be 2 times 2 is what? 4 plus 3 times 0 is 0 plus 5 times 7 is 35. 2 times negative 2 is negative 4 plus 3 times 3 is 9 plus 5 times 0 is 0. 2 times 3 is 6. Plus 3 times negative 3 is negative 9. Okay? Negative 9. 3 plus negative 9. Plus 5 times negative 2 is negative 10. <coughs> okay? Then here, negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. Uh, plus negative 2 times 0 is 0 plus 0 times 7 is 0 <coughs> okay here yeah, negative 3 times negative 2 is 6 plus negative 2 times 3 is negative 6 plus 0 times 0 is 0 then here negative 3 times 3 is negative 9 plus Negative 2 times negative 3 is 6. Okay? 
plus 0 times negative 2 is 0. Okay, folks, let's finish it up. So this will give us what now? Uh, AB, we don't need C anymore, so let's erase this. So our AB will be 4 plus 0 is 4, plus 35 is 39. Negative 4 plus 9 is 5. Plus 0 is 5. 6 plus minus 9. 6 minus 9 is minus 3. Minus 3 minus 10 is minus 13. Okay? Minus 6 plus 0 minus 6. 6 plus minus 6. 6 minus 6 0. 0 plus 0 is 0. Minus 9 plus 6. Minus three. And this becomes your answer. That becomes your answer. 39, 5, negative 13. Mm -hmm. Minus 6, 0, minus 3. <clears throat> and like I said earlier, you can check your work using Google Spreadsheet or Excel or the calculators. Okay? I did some videos already on Excel, how you can use Excel to Check your work on matrices. Uh, just check out the resources on uh, on the discrete map. Now, for the videos of Excel, you will see it under videos. Okay, you see it under videos using Excel to add, subtract, multiply matrices. Okay, and you can do the same thing with Google Spreadsheet if you have a Gmail account. Okay, Google Spreadsheet is free. Uh, <coughs> Okay, now the other, the thing, the next one, uh, we have a C part. So this is the B part. C part, compute BA. Compute BA, B times A. You know, with matrices, you know, with real numbers, uh, multiplication of real numbers is commutative. Okay, uh, uh, if you have 2 times 3, is the same thing as 3 times 2. 2 times negative 3 is the same thing as negative 3 times 2. Negative 2 times negative 3 is the same thing as negative 3 times negative 2. Okay? Uh, this is commutativity. Commutative. Multiplication of, uh, of real numbers is uh, commutative. Commutativity. A times B is equal to B times A. For real numbers. Now for matrices, for matrices, uh -uh. for matrices, for matrices, uh, multiplication of, for matrices, the multiplication of matrices, A times B is not equal to B times A. Unless for one condition, except for one condition. Except, Unless, unless B is equal to A inverse, the inverse. That is the only condition. <clears throat> and of course, when you multiply a matrix and the inverse, it gives you an identity matrix. Okay. Now, but now, uh, that, that's why they also told us to find a, B A. If this product is undefined, explain why. So, let's look at B A. A, B can work. Now let's see whether we can do B, A. So with B, A, uh, can I write it here? A, B. So this is A, B. Yes, it will work. It will work. But then let's find B, A. So in, writing B, in finding B, A, let's write A, B, and then B, A. Let's see first whether it will work, and then if it works, we should not, we, we shall multiply it. So B is a three by three matrix, and A is a two by three matrix. So uh, before you multiply matrices, you have to first write their size, their order. So you see here that the number of columns of B is not equal to the number of rows of A. 
It's not equal to that. 3 is not equal to 2. The number of columns of B is not equal to the number of rows of A. So, not possible. You cannot multiply the A because the number of uh, this is not equal to this. The number of columns of the first one should be equal to the number of rows of the second one <coughs> for multiplication to be possible. If not, it's not. It's not conformable for multiplication. It's not. Or not feasible. You can say not feasible. Okay? Alright. Uh, so, we are going to stop here for today. And if you have any questions, feel free to ask me. If you are my student, you don't need to contact me through my website. If you are my student, please contact me through the school email address. Okay? If you are not my student, you can contact me through my website. Okay? Thank you so much for listening. And you have a great day.